So what is cognitive psychology, cognitive neuroscience? Cognitive psychology is the study of the human brain, the limbic system, the mechanism, the central nervous system, the association lobes, how we perceive, what is perception. Perception is how we're able to uh, engage with knowledge, with information, what we perceive about different topics and disciplines, or what we perceive about what we're reading or what we're doing. That is perception. Um, we have a different type of intelligence. Some of us are very good at mathematics or science. Other of us are very good at linguistic, interpersonal skill, kinesthetics, uh, logistics. The human brain is very complex, although marvelous. Um, it's designed in such a way that we associate the lobes, um, for example, the cortex, that's for higher intellectual activity, higher cognitive matter. We have the intellectual side of the brain, we have the special perception, we have the visual part of the brain that is called the cortex. cortis, it's actually located on the back. And then um, we also have the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe is like interpretation of words, also when we're able, yeah, interpretation of words. The interpretation of words is correlated to brocas and the workness areas. Um, we also remember things when we correlate it with memory or emotion. Memory and emotion um, create a, a strong long-term potentiation that relates to long-term memory. Long-term memory is how we're able to associate how we learn. So the more we read, the more we do research, the more we study, the more we develop our intellectual capacity, we're able to create a higher IQ, an intelligence quotient of, let's say, 150, 165. Um, Einstein, Einstein's brain, uh, part of his hemisphere was actually larger than the other. That's why you correlate it well with quantum physics, mathematics, and science, uh, a very brilliant mind. Um, you also have Similar, similar uh, brains, cerebrum, cerebellum, that correlate to the type of activity. Um, for example, when we study mathematics, we have a specific part of the brain that activates. For example, that is called association with the parieta cortex. The human brain is amazing. It's, it's marvelous. Um, we are how we think. How we, how we think, what we read, what we eat, what we're able to understand. That's, that's how our brain is created. We are based on our genetics, our genome, our connectome, our DNA, the chromosome, our DNA, our DNA codes. There's a huge set of DNA codes that explain also RNA and DNA. That is um, that is assumption, and, and it explains how we are, how we are, what we read, and also our, our genes, our DNA. The gene plays our genome, our neurobiology plays a huge part in what we're able to learn, and what we're, how we're able to behave, and how we're able to think. When I chose to study the degree in cognitive psychology and neuroscience, um, basically because it's not only a study of the human brain, but because you learn and you're able to relate and understand people. It's, it's amazing how when we study cognitive psychology and neuroscience, we're able to understand people, decision-making process, how the neurochemicals correlate with each other, what is schizophrenia, what is depression, HDAC, how can we develop explicit, implicit memory, procedure memory, semantic memory, long-term memory, how can we develop all those different types of memories that correlate to who we are. There's also a specific part of the brain that activates with photographic memory. Photographic memory is the ability to see what you're reading, what you're doing research, what math analysis, what statistical formula you're doing. That's what um, a photographic memory is. Um, I was, I'm very thankful to God. He gave me a very blessed mind and, and I love sharing with you what I'm able to see and what I'm able to view and how you're able to maybe improve as persons and on the development of the human brain. 
um, my father was a huge, huge, huge model for me. My mom as well, the huge, huge model, big time in mathematics and science. Um, you always have to keep studying, doing reading, doing research, understanding how to engage more in intellectual activity. Because remember, your brain decreases in intellectual matter, gray and white matter, when you stop developing your brain intellectual. When you stop doing reading or doing research or or any some kind of intellectual uh, mental activity that decreases your IQ matter and unfortunately we see this in people who retire people who retire they show a percentage that explain how their intelligence quotient their IQ goes down and correlates to a robotic a zombie meaning they have no intellectual matter or intelligence on their brain we done also t distribution studies that measure how creativity can be increased. Creativity is huge in learning. Creativity is huge in learning. We're able to see how the brain that the brain is able to think. When you're doing a doctor or a PhD or when you're doing research, creativity plays a huge part in learning. Because without creativity, you're not able to develop new innovation, new methodology. Without creativity, we're not able to create something innovative, something that's going to be, wow, what an impact. Um, my studies right now is actually understanding, well, the anatomy of the human brain when I was working with uh, Folsa University in the joint program with MIT. The, it was correlating neuroscience with mathematics and media design, developing uh, understanding algorithms and logarithms, the study of the human brain, and how when we view an image that activates our motion perception, a whole three different sets of disciplines. The PhD is more like an intellectual level. It's, it's more of a, it's more of developing methodologies. It's more how we're able to think. It's, it's, it's basically the study of memory, intelligence, our human behavior, different type of methodologies that unity and activity, uh, different type sets of methodologies that that correlate to, to you know what is neuroscience, what is cognitive psychology. Um, we have a whole set of different methodologies from behavioralism, structuralism, unity. Uh, we have a different type of gestal theory. Um, it's, it's cognitive science and psychology is huge, you know, it's, it's a whole set of disciplines from A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I mean, there's a huge set of disciplines. We also have the quantitative and qualitative discipline. The quantitative and qualitative discipline, what are the mixed method approach? What is the mixed method approach? What is a central, what is statistical methodology? What are the different type of variables? How we can calculate logarithms, algorithm, or how can we calculate Cogarithms, cogarithm. It's, it's it's actually uh, it's correlated to to logarithms, but cogarithms is said to to it's, it's, it's the reciprocal number. It's it's correlated to a reciprocal number, so it's it's really interesting. It's called cogarithm. It's similar to logarithms. The human mind is amazing. We are we're able to do so much. It's like a sponge. What we read, what we study how we gain information, it, it is all creating who we are, what we're able to do with our minds. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's just the most amazing thing. And of course, spirituality, that plays a huge, huge part on the development of intellectual matter. God, God is amazing. God is wonderful. He gave me a very photographic memory. So yes, if you challenge me to read a book, a page number, um, if you challenge me to read a chapter, or if you challenge me to read a research, uh, it'll stay here. Uh, I've, I mean, it'll, it'll stay here. I can assure you 100%. It's God has gave me a very blessed mind, um, and, I, and I believe definitely in his ability to use knowledge and wisdom and, and helping other people and letting them know, that, yes, you know, Continue growing intellectually. Be yourself. Uh, develop growing brain matter. Because remember, once you stop learning, 
your brain decays. There's a decrease in the generation of synaptic neurons and cells. It decreases. The people who are, you associate yourself, that plays a huge, but a huge role in how you're going to be able to develop mentally, emotionally, and based the personality. That's huge. I love being able to show you what I, what my research is able to do, how I'm able to help out, what are the, how, what are the different disciplines of cognitive psychology, neuroscience, what is logarithms, algorithm, what is algorithms, what is quantitative knowledge, what is qualitative knowledge, what is a mixed meta approach. I love showing people how to learn how to be able, how they're able to use their brain and engage more and grow intellectual. Because remember, once you stop learning, your brain dies. Your brain is like a sponge. Everything you read, everything you do research, everything you write, everything you eat, and who you associate yourself, that correlates to who, how your brain is going to develop, how your persona and your emotions. And remember, always continue learning. And most important, do everything with passion, with God, and follow, follow your heart. Follow your heart and do what you love. In my case, I love cognitive psychology. I love studying. I love learning. I love memorizing. I love reading books. Um, and and um, I love helping people see how they can develop the best of their potential. Nidia.